Hello guys, my name is German and sorry for recording my uh, screen with the camcorder because I suck. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is to give you a tutorial on uh, how to perform a live uh, beats, should I say, to play live beats. Okay, first thing you need to do to perform live is you basically need to create uh, this uh, uh, the instrumental or how should I say the beat by itself just in uh, in a sequencer on the timeline. These are the pianos I did. Okay, uh, then uh, there's a ah, bass line. Uh, it, su it sucks, I can uh, easily remove it from uh, our uh, loop. And so, and the third component of our loops is uh, another piano. Yeah this one okay so if we unmute uh, all our uh, tracks uh, it'll go like this okay you can use uh, every, uh, any instrument you want it can be the standard uh, Ableton plugin it, it can also be a VSTI uh, no matter, but um, another thing you want to you want to do is uh, resample all your uh, loops you created uh, one by one. But uh, by one by one, I mean uh, every single instrument by itself. So if you hear closely, okay, this one, the piano. Okay, the bass line and uh, the another piano. The interesting part of uh, this one here, the piano, is it was uh, recorded like this, so I had to cut it uh, in order to uh, it uh, plays exactly when I hit the button the, on the MIDI controller. So what you can do also is you can uh, just uh, leave it as a loop or you can just cut it like I did uh, and uh, that's basically it, it's uh, for basics. So, okay, uh, to perform live we use uh, Ableton uh, uh, drum rack. So, well, what you, uh, what you need to do is just, you just uh, take your loops, uh, recorded, resampled loops from the timeline and drag them into uh, the drum rack, uh, like, like this, just tack. Okay, you might find out that uh, it, on release it will stop playing. So uh, what you need to do is uh, Ableton has uh, uh, includes some MIDI effects. You can uh, you can find them on in MIDI effects folder. So what you need to do is uh, take note length from MIDI effects of Ableton and drag them straight onto your sample like this. We release and then we just uh, how should I say increase the length of the note. And uh, here we are. What we do is we just play, press play, and there, there we go. Sometimes when you play, you find out that one sample is uh, uh, is layering the other. If you don't want that, you just uh, go. So uh, I'll try this on the drum pad. You'll see two samples are playing simultaneously, but we don't need that. So I'm gonna choose for this one, choke one, like we chose for that one. And what will happen is basically you play one sample and it won't, won't override the other. You got the idea, okay? We are ready to perform. Don't forget that uh, Ableton's uh, drum rack puts a vol uh, the standard volume of the, your sample or loop for minus 12 decibels. So you want to increase that one, make sure you increase that one. Uh, then you want to uh, add some uh, percussion. Uh, by percussion I mean uh, hi-hats and snares and whatever you want. Aquatic. Aquatic. Okay, now when we're ready, this is our pad control. And uh, what we have, let's check the right head. Snare, kick, bass loop, piano loop, and this one. Okay, these are actually uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, I'm not a professional performer, but uh, it, and it is easier for me to perform with uh, this layout. By layout, I mean at length of loops. I think we we're ready to try. Uh, let, let's find out how uh, it's gonna work. Yeah, uh, uh, that's, that's just basically it. All you have to remember is uh, uh, the way you play, the way your uh, instruments are placed on the pads, it doesn't matter at all. It's not that uh, important because it's a matter of time you get used to any layout. That's, uh, that's actually it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, best regards, guys. Best regards.